Hi, my name is Helena Durai, and I'm reading from a short story called Bigger and Better. When Ella answered the knock at her front door, the girl gripping the bike wheel spoke first. This might seem kind of weird, but we're playing a game, the girl said. Bigger and better? Two other girls stood behind her as if they'd prearranged which one would knock. One of them held a thermos, the other an empty plastic Coke bottle. All three of them had eyes rimmed in black pencil, lids coated in sparkly blue powder, shiny lips, thick eyebrows, long straight hair. Their jeans flared at the calves, cuffs bedraggled. The girls giggled at Ella's confusion. It wasn't unkind giggling, but still Ella marveled. Even at 40, it stung to be the butt of jokes for pretty popular girls. The one with the thermos took pity on her. It's where we go around trying to get people to give us stuff, kind of like a treasure hunt, and whichever team has the biggest and best thing at the end wins. Ella looked around her living room. She wanted to be helpful, but she had spare surfaces, empty corners. Years ago, after Leo moved out, she decluttered her house, starting with his waffle iron. She had never liked waffles. She'd always aspired to minimalism anyway, now everything she saw was something she used or wanted. I'm so sorry, she said to the girls, shaking her head. The girls glanced past her into the house, and Ella tried to fill the door frame to block their view in case they saw something they thought Ella should want to give them. She could think only of the recycling bin in the kitchen with its plastic bottles and aluminum cans, but none were bigger than the Coke bottle the girls already had. The girls kept standing there as if they didn't believe Ella would actually disappoint them. I'm so sorry, Ella said again, more firmly. Good luck. The girls bolted as a herd, calling a belated thank you over their shoulders. Ella smiled. Thanks for nothing, lady. She worried about them in their ultra long jeans. How could they run without tripping? Across the street, a group of four girls jog-walked in a tight cluster. One of them hugged to her chest a giant stuffed Rastafarian banana with googly eyes, yarn dreadlocks, and a beanie in the colors of the Jamaican flag. It was almost as tall as she was and a clear indicator of victory. The sight spurred Ella's sudden, fierce loyalty. In an instant, the girls who'd come to her door became her team, her girls. Ella sped from room to room, searching for things to part with. She imagined herself sprinting down the sidewalk after the girls, offering something huge and awesome in her outstretched arms. Through the bedroom window, she glimpsed her garage. She decluttered the house, but never the garage. In fact, some of what she'd cleared from the house, she'd shoved onto shelves lining the garage. She rolled back the heavy door and looked at everything the girls might have wanted, everything that might have clinched the game for them. She sprinted to the corner, looked up the cross street both ways for the girls, none in sight. Girls, she wanted to call. Girls, come back. Maybe they would pass this way again. If they did, she'd be ready. In the center of the garage, she piled a picnic basket she bought on a whim in Vancouver and moved to three different states without ever once taking on a picnic snowboarding boots that were always too tight and made her hate snowboarding. A beat-up cooler with a former employer's company logo, yellowed lampshades, a red check tablecloth, a magician boyfriend yanked out from under a meal one night in an Italian restaurant just to prove to her he could. A miniature tabletop foosball game, a collapsible red nylon kitten climbing structure, a kite with the face of a cartoon dog, and so on. She piled and piled and then walked it by the armload to the street corner, the way people did in this lazy beach neighborhood. No one ever bothered putting up a free sign. Ella looked again for her girls but didn't see them. She admired them, even as she feared them a little. Thank you for listening.